Imagine this. You're driving along a lightly traveled road, listening to a Commando On Demand podcast, thinking about the day, maybe trying to decide what's for dinner, the kids' schedules, the boss's issues with your latest decision, your vacation, or more like it, lack of one, your grocery list. Then it happens. Did you just take your eyes and concentration off the road to look at your phone? It was just a quick check you justify, only a glance at the screen. What if you're stuck in bumper-to-bumper rush hour traffic or stopped at a light? It's okay then to read a text that seems more important than the car you're controlling. Have you reached for your phone driving at 20, 30, 40, 50, or even 60 miles per hour or more? Or maybe it wasn't you. You're following a car and something's wrong. The car speeds up and suddenly slows down. Or maybe the car swerves into another lane. Then as you get closer, you see it. The driver's right hand is holding their phone pointed directly at his or her face and braced by the steering wheel. They think they're driving just fine. After all, their head isn't totally in the phone screen. They can still see the road. Some states have passed laws to ban distracted driving, but many people are still getting away with it. And most of the time, nothing bad happens. But if you make a habit of answering texts while driving or sending emails or using the web, or playing around in an app, or paying bills. Eventually, it will catch up with you. I remember the day of the crash. It was June 30th, and uh, Andrea had the day off, um, and was going to spend it with her girls that day. I remember that I had to make a payment on a loan, and I thought, what better time to do it now? If I forget, um, I won't remember to do it later. I'm Kim Commando. Thanks for listening to this very important podcast about distracted driving. My goal here is to inform you about the dangers. So maybe, just maybe, we can make the streets safer because creating laws can only go so far. And before we get started, a special thank you goes out to our partners in the podcast because they make this podcast possible. Since our founding in 2000, we at the Center for Internet Security have always had one mission. It's to create confidence in the connected world for people, businesses, and governments. As a nonprofit, we do this by drawing upon our core competencies of collaboration and innovation. The world is changing, cyber threats are evolving, and IT resources are limited. All you want is a way to strengthen your cybersecurity programs efficiently and effectively. Let CIS help you with these efforts. We use a consensus-based process involving IT professionals from around the world to develop and maintain security best practices. These resources are proven to defend systems and data against threats, both on premises and in the cloud. We also strive to help organizations of every size and maturity strengthen their cybersecurity programs. This includes serving US state, local, tribal, and territorial government organizations. At CIS, we're all about making the connected world a safer place. Visit our website to learn more. Nine one one, where's your emergency? There's a girl in the bed. I think they hit by a car. We need to not. We need like. You need the ambulance? She's not breathing good at all. We need an ambulance or something really fast. She's not breathing. A father, Matt Bowie, forced to raise his two daughters all by himself. The distracted driver, Chris Weber serving out his time in prison. Chris is remorseful. He knows what he did was terribly wrong. He wishes he could go back and do that day over. Tears roll down his face when he talks about the tragedy. He also claims he's a good guy who just made a mistake. And we ask ourselves, how many of us have done the same? It's become an epidemic. Did you know that on average, sending or receiving a text message takes your eyes off the road for 4.6 seconds? The equivalent at 55 miles an hour is driving the entire length of a football field blindfolded. In 2015, 10,265 people died in drunk driving crashes, one every 51 minutes. During daylight hours, approximately 660,000 drivers are using cell phones while driving. That creates enormous potential for deaths and injuries on U.S. roads. We have this tendency to dwell on fatalities, and in the meantime, we overlook the number of serious injuries. I mean, there are millions of people injured in motor vehicle crashes every year. And in many occasions, they are life altering. 
And, you know, that's where I've begun to dwell because if we could reduce these crashes, you know, naturally we, we would significantly reduce not only the fatalities, but significantly reduce those injuries. Jay Anderson sees this firsthand. He's the executive director of Stay Alive, Just Drive, a nationally recognized crash education and awareness program. He says that just because someone survives a crash doesn't mean they're going to be okay for some their life will never be the same. That's something that we do overlook. I'll use Hannah Grant as a great example. Um, she was a young lady involved in a distracted driving crash, was the passenger in the rear of the van, took the brunt of the crash. A uh, distracted driver ran a red light at 55 miles an hour. And she spent 22 days in a coma. And there was no miraculous made-for-TV awakening. No ensuing smile crossed her lips with what happened because this funny, bright child with her life full of endless possibilities has been sentenced to life in a wheelchair without parole. That was eight years ago. She has a traumatic brain injury and requires 24-hour care all because of a distracted driver. We extended an invitation to Hannah's mother to talk to us about her daughter and how the accident changed their lives forever. She wanted to, but she just couldn't. No, it wasn't because talking about it would bring up too many awful memories and heartache. She doesn't have the time. Hannah is back in the hospital. This time, Hannah is suffering with a disease worsened by her injuries, all because someone ran a red light and they were not paying attention to the road. It would tear any family apart. Uh, this is a very special family. You know, she just recently turned 15, and instead of receiving her driver's license or her, her permit to drive, um, you know, she's spending time in the hospital trying to maintain some quality of life. And Hannah's not the only one. There are people all over the United States in the same situation. Victims of a distracted driver who weren't killed, but they will spend the rest of their lives dependent on others for survival. As far as the distracted driver who hit Hannah, well, he was cited for running a red light and later released. Hannah's family tried to sue him, but he filed for bankruptcy. I don't know what kind of person he is. I don't know if he just shrugged it off and said, well, accidents happen. But I do know that he will have to spend the rest of his life knowing that Hannah will never, ever be able to function on her own again. We, we have two choices. Our pain is exactly the same either way. We can sit home and do nothing, or we could try to do something positive. That's Russell Hurd. He faced that decision when his lovely daughter, who was living her dream until eight years ago. My daughter came out of her development and stopped at the first traffic signal, and um, along with nine other cars. And a tractor trailer driver uh, was texting his company at the time. This episode is brought to you by Kia's first three-row all-electric SUV, the Kia EV9. With available all-wheel drive and seating for up to seven adults. With zero to 60 speed that thrills you one minute. And available lounge seats that unwind you the next. Visit kia.com slash EV9 to learn more. Ask your Kia dealer for availability. No system, no matter how advanced, can compensate for all driver error and or driving conditions. Always drive safely. Heather Hurd had plans. She'd moved from her home in Maryland to Florida because she always wanted to do one thing. She wanted to work for Disney World. Beautiful in every way, her flowing brown hair framed big brown eyes. And, well, Heather loved life and adventure. From the time she was a little girl on, on her first visit to, to Disney World, she always, uh, when we were leaving for the, our last day of vacation, she would always cry and, and say, one day I'm not going to have to leave because I'm going to uh, work here. So when she was chosen out of 300 uh, applicants to be an intern, she made that dream come true. Um, like I said, she was just a, a very, very special uh, girl and young woman. This princess in her father's eye met her Prince Charming in Florida. They were so much in love. They did everything together. They even finished each other's sentences. 
Heather called home and announced they were going to get married. Russell, his wife and son, traveled down to the Sunshine State to help plan the wedding. The day was bright, and they were all so very happy. Mom, Dad, and little brother sitting in the wedding planner's office, waiting and waiting. But Heather never showed. Heather was never late to anything. So we were waiting, 12 o'clock came and went, and we, we knew something was terribly wrong. Uh, her fiance was not answering his phone. She was not answering her phone. We finally r rushed back to our hotel room and the, the light was flashing in the room and we, we found out at that point that there had been a crash. It took us about three hours of trying to find out information until we finally did find out that she had been killed on the scene. Russell describes that moment as a bad dream, and he still can't wake up. He and his family went from planning a wedding to a funeral in just a matter of hours. The loss was really hard on him, his wife, and maybe more importantly, his son. It affects each person differently. Parents are not supposed to bury their child, and uh, siblings, you know, I mean, as growing up, they have their differences and battles, but they were my son and daughter were just becoming best of friends when when she was killed so he missed out on that as well and he's almost become like an only child now which is uh difficult in itself The tragedy eight years later still stings. You can hear Russell's voice shake when he speaks. He lost his baby. He lost her babies too. Any grandchildren he would love, teach, and share stories with. He has the highest regard for his daughter's fiance, who was severely injured in the crash. But Russell says he still can't bring himself to contact him. It's just too hard. I'm happy to say that he, he now is, seems to be doing well. He is married, so, um, and that's what he's supposed to do. He's supposed to move on, and uh, we're, we're happy for that. The truck driver who caused the wreck killed two people, hurt many more, but was only cited for careless driving. That's because Florida had no law at the time against texting while driving. Russell took that information back to Maryland, and he used it as a call for action. His goal, to keep the tragedy from happening to another family. He testified before state lawmakers who ultimately passed Heather's Law making it illegal for people to text while driving in the state. He was proud of the law, thinking it would save lives, but quickly realized no matter how many laws there are, it comes down to educating drivers. And a certain culture has, has developed in the country where drinking and driving is looked at in a negative way. We need to find a way to do the same thing for distracted driving. And, and the best way, again, is just to continuing education and awareness of, of just how dangerous these practices are. It happens to all of us. We're traveling down the road and we hear that sound. It's a text message and almost as if it were a reflex. We just want to take our mind off the road and shift our focus onto our phone. But it has to stop. Before we talk about how our brains work and often don't work well at all when we multitask, I'd like you to take a moment to recognize one of our partners who helped make this podcast possible. We've already heard from Jay Anderson. He's the executive director of Stay Alive, Just Drive. I have had people walk in front of me while on their devices. I have been walked into by people on electronic devices. I've had, I don't know how many close encounters with people on the road. So we're only fooling ourselves. I mean, our brain is not designed to do that. Driving is the most dangerous thing that we do on a daily basis. Anytime you're behind the wheel, you, you need to stay alert. You need to stay focused at all times. And you can't do that 
for engaging uh, in the use of an electronic device. You can tell when uh, the driver interrupts the conversation to concentrate on their drive. Uh, becomes very, very obvious. When they pay attention to their driving, they pick their speed up. When they engage in the conversation, their speed begins to slow down. They start to stop and slow down at green traffic signals. Uh, they drift out of their lane. And then when they realize that they're doing that and they concentrate on the driving, boom, their driving improves once again. They go back to the conversation and their driving begins to dwindle. Very, very apparent. We falsely think that all those traffic laws are actually traffic suggestions. That's because it's never going to happen to us. We're just way too careful. We're smarter than that. It's not that long of a time. Think again. It only takes a split second of a distraction to run anyone off the road, including yourself. We had a uh, officer here in Fort Myers, and he was following an individual preparing to make the traffic stop. And as right after the uh, uh, driver made a right turn onto a highway, speed maybe at 30 miles an hour, that he crashed, right? Now you're figuring one o'clock in the morning, the guy's gotta be impaired. He crawls out of the vehicle. You can clearly see the cell phone hanging to his side. Uh, after further investigation, um, the individual um, tested negative for drugs and alcohol and clearly admitted that he was texting. Now, um, if, if you're a law enforcement officer and you can't make that determination and, and it's that dangerous, how does the general public make that determination? Most states are doing their best, passing laws trying to curb distracted driving. Right now, 46 states have laws banning text messaging for all drivers and 14 states prohibit drivers from using handheld cell phones. Some states even banned hands-free devices. But a lot of those laws are secondary, meaning a police officer can only issue a ticket if a driver has been pulled over for another violation, like speeding. Jay Anderson wants to change that. He believes there should be tough penalties for those who drive while distracted. If we were to treat this like a DUI and send a stiff penalty, perhaps some jail time, especially if you critically injure or kill someone, then society perhaps would begin looking at it uh, in a different perspective. There are lawmakers in some states who are fighting distracted driving legislation. Quite frankly, they're probably some of the biggest defenders. <laughs> um, for whatever reason, you know, until they in, suffer a personal tragedy and it hits home, uh, they're off, often the staunchest opponents of, of any type of legislation. And sometimes you have to take baby steps and enact the legislation and then strengthen it, as we did, for example, with seatbelts. No matter what, laws can only go so far. Russell Hurt discovered that soon after Heather's law went into effect. Drivers have to understand that the brain can't do more than one thing at one time especially while traveling down the road at 55 miles an hour. Watch people in the parking lots, watch them in the grocery stores, you know, watch them in the movie theaters, um, even in church. It doesn't matter where you go any longer. Um, you watch people on skateboards. <laughs> they have an electronic device in their hands. They're riding a bicycle. They have an electronic device. Um, it, it's absolutely incredible. Uh, and, you know, the problem is we don't think about how dangerous it is. We don't think when it's appropriate and when it's inappropriate. Um, and, and I think the two questions that we all forget and we should ask ourselves anytime we engage in, in dangerous behavior is number one, is it necessary? And number two, is it worth the risk? No matter what law is created, ultimately, individual drivers are the ones responsible. And we should educate drivers about the dangers of distracted driving. If you're trying to cut out the temptation of distracted driving, try throwing your phone in the back seat. Remember, out of sight, out of mind. You have to set an example for the kids, too. I met a woman once who told me that she puts her phone in the trunk of her car when she's driving. She taught her daughter to do the same. I asked her then if she thought that the daughter actually put her phone in the trunk when mom wasn't in the car. She shrugged her shoulders and said, probably not. Well, too many parents don't get involved until something bad happens. Tech can help, but it's absolutely no substitution for parental guidance, reinforcement, and direction. There are a few apps that can help. I've spoken about them on my national radio show, and I'll tell you about a few of them now. But just remember, 
the apps can only go so far. First is Canary. It notifies parents when the phone is unlocked while driving. Cell control is another. It requires a device that's installed under the steering column. It monitors when the car is moving and stops screen pop-ups when the car is in motion. Text limit allows parents to set a speed. The phone's features turn completely off or partially off when the car reaches that speed. And finally, drivesafe.ly. It sends an automatic response like, I'm driving, when there's an incoming text or email. So put the phone down, turn the phone off, put the phone in the trunk if that's what it takes. Russell Hurd has the best advice, and I'd like you to remember this the next time you're tempted and share this podcast and advice with all you know. Somebody loves you. Somebody's waiting for you to come home. Put the phone down. I'm Kim Commando, and you can listen to my national radio show every week on over 400 top radio stations across the country and around the world on Armed Forces Radio. To find the station nearest you, head over to commando.com slash radio. That's K-O-M-A-N-D-O dot com slash radio.